episode 43, we're going to play a little game called Charty Party. And Charty Party is a, a little bit like um, Cards Against Humanity, or sometimes I think it's Cards Against Zumanity. I haven't played the game, so I don't know it. Um, but, but that's what's going to happen here. So in a moment, you're going to see four orange cards pop up. You can kind of see them in the background there. And then I'm going to draw a white card, and it's going to have a chart on it. It's going to have an x-axis, our variable. And then we're going to see which of these four cards um, either fits or best fits our, our y-axis. And this is going to give us just a little bit more of an idea about um, regression analysis, whether it's linear regression or quadratic. So let's see what our four card options are. All right, and I just drew these off of my orange pile. So it looks like we have a potential y-axis with the moistness of a handshake, the length of time a hug lasts, the sadness when viewing yourself in a mirror, and interest in hunting humans for sport. Great. So let's take a look at those. Um, and then what we're going to do, oops, sorry, let me get my, my chart cards. So you see I have a whole set of chart cards. Now I'm just going to pick the one that's on top here. And let's see what we have. It looks like we have politics. So let me put that down and kind of line that up. So there we go. We have politics. So it looks like my x-axis, um, it's going from Bernie to Ted Cruz. So at the time that I am recording this, Bernie is a um, very progressive liberal. Uh, I know liberal is here, but he's even left of them. Um, he's a Democrat. He's technically independent, but caucuses with the Democrats. And then we go liberal, moderate, conservative. And Ted Cruz is very far on the right of that spectrum of political preferences. So if this is our x-axis and we see that something here is increasing, so it's low for Bernie or relatively low for Bernie, low for liberals, moderates, just slightly higher for conservatives, but it's pretty level here and then it shoots up pretty high when we get to Ted Cruz. So let's see if we can find a card that matches. So if this were gonna be my y-axis, if we were gonna put moistness of a handshake here, Let's see if it works. So we've got, um, this would say here that Bernie's handshakes are not that wet. Liberal's not that wet, moderate's not that wet. Conservatives may be a little higher, but it, it really creeps up here for Teddy Boy. Now, I, I don't know Ted Cruz, so I don't know if his handshakes are particularly moist or not. So I'm really not sure if this one would work. So I'll put this off to the side. And then our next one that we have, it looks like we've got the length of time that a hug lasts. Let me move these back down here just so we have them. So length of time that a hug lasts. So this would be that the left-leaning folks, or the left-leaning political folks, um, they don't uh, take that long to hug you. Liberals don't take that long to hug you. Moderates don't take that long to hug you. Conservatives take a little bit more time if this is gonna be our y-axis. And Ted, whoo, Ted really likes to hug. Now again, this goes back to, I really don't know a whole lot about Ted Cruz. So, me, I mean, I know enough, but, I don't know that he likes to hug for a long time, so I'm not sure that this one totally applies. So again, I'm gonna leave these, oh, I'll put this one back in. I'll leave these over here. All right, so let's take a look at this one. All right, so this one, viewing yourself in a mirror. So this would mean all these folks are pretty, they're, they're not that sad when they view themselves in a mirror. <laughs> Ted Cruz would be really sad. So again, goes back to, I just don't know that much about Ted Cruz, so maybe that works. And let's see about this one. This is interest in hunting humans for sport. So it's trying to say that left-leaning folks, moderates, conservatives, they're not really into hunting folks for sport, but apparently Ted is. Um, so if, if I was playing this like a Cards Against Humanity thing, if I had to pick one of these four, and if you're really playing this, you're supposed to have seven of them, but if I, if I was gonna pick this, um, I, I, would, I would pick the sadness one. So I would say, that um, Ted Cruz is very sad when he looks himself in the mirror. Okay, so I'm gonna reset the board and we're gonna try this again. I'll see you in just a bit. Hey Math 43, we're back. So we've got four new potential Y axes. So I pulled um, unexplained but primal need for organic foods, um, likelihood to refer to yourself as the big boy, uh, seconds waited a, at a green light before honking at the car in front of you and reliance on smiling and nodding in agreement even though you're not exactly sure what someone said. Okay, so there are my potential y-axes. Here are my, my chart cards, so let's see what we have here. Um, this is number of friends. So we have number of friends going from a hermit to two friends, five friends, 10 friends, and then, oh, this is an old reference, Tom from MySpace. Uh, MySpace was before Facebook and everybody had a friend named Tom. Um, and it looks like it decreases, so hermits have something really high 
and then as soon as you have two friends, it's pretty low and then it gets lower. And this is actually, it's not linear decay, this is exponential decay because it's got that curve to it. All right, so let's see um, how this would work. So if you are a hermit, this would mean that your primal need for organic foods is really high. Now again, this goes back to, I don't know how hermits live, but I don't really think that they have a high need for organic foods. And if you have two friends, then your need for organic foods is much lower, five friends even lower. So this is saying the more friends you have, the less need you have for organic food. That doesn't really hold water for me, so I'm, I'm gonna push this off into the, I don't think so pile, but we'll see, because maybe none of these will fit. All right, let's see what we have here. Likely to refer to yourself as big boy. Um, I could almost see this happening. Like maybe if you're by yourself, you're more likely to do it, right? Maybe that's your nickname for yourself. And the more friends you have out there, the less likely you are to do it. So um, I, I don't know if this is so much as number of friends I have, but the number of friends in front of me, I'm less likely to refer to myself as big boy. So this is I, this doesn't work perfectly, but I think it's still better than this organic one. So I'm gonna put this over here. Okay, so let's see. Seconds waited at a green light before honking at the car in front of you. So this is saying that a hermit would take a lot of seconds, right? Because you would see if this is the seconds and this is high up on the y-axis, the hermit's gonna take the longest. And then based on the number of friends you have, you're gonna honk faster and faster and faster. So maybe you're waiting five seconds for this person or for this, if you're a hermit, you wait five seconds before you honk, two friends, you have, wait one second, half a second, a fourth of a second. And again, I don't know this has so much to do with the number of friends that you have, maybe so much as the number of friends or folks in the car. I think sometimes when I have folks in, in the car, I might get a little bit more impatient. So uh, eh, that's a maybe, I'll put this up here. I don't like it as much as the big boy one. All right, let's see. Reliance on smiling and nodding in agreement, even though you're not exactly sure what someone said. So this, again, I could actually kind of see this happening. Like, well, maybe not, let me let me do the Y axis. So if, if it's a hermit, if you're by yourself, are you gonna be more likely to rely on smiling and nodding, e even though you're not exactly sure what someone said? Well, if you're a hermit, you're by yourself. So I actually, this won't work. Because if I'm a hermit, I don't need to do any of this. So it wouldn't be high. And this is saying the more friends you have, the less likely you are to rely on, on smiling and nodding. So that doesn't quite hold water for me. Um, I, I would think if anything, it would go for me the other way. The more people that I'm around, like if a whole bunch of people are laughing, uh, I, I'm gonna just nod in agreement because I don't wanna stop the conversation. So based on these, I think this is the closest one. It's not a perfect fit, but welcome to that game. All right, so I'm gonna reset and we'll try this one more time, okay? I'll catch you in a bit, bye. Hey Math 43, we're back for one more round of Charty Party. So it looks like our new Y axes are, I go back, I pulled level of involuntary eye twitching, intensity of hand gestures, frequency of being duped into sharing fake news on Facebook, and amount you'd pay to attend a Phil Collins concert. So I've got my orange cards, I'm gonna pull my white chart card. So let's see what we pulled here. Okay, it looks like we're doing education level, and it looks like initially if you don't have much education, you do a lot of it, and then when you're a bachelor, or high school a bachelor, you're doing a lot less of it, and then it heads up again. So that's like a, a U distribution, not the uniform. Uniform would be if it was straight across, if it was constant, but we got a U. All right, so let's see if this will make any of this work. All right, this one might actually. Oh no, I don't, act, Never mind. I don't know, I was thinking this part might work. All right, so level of involuntary eye twitching. So maybe when you're in fifth grade, you have a lot of involuntary eye twitching, and then as you get older or more and more educated, that eye twitching heads down. But then I don't know why, if you got an advanced degree, like a master's or a PhD, your involuntary eye twitching would go up. So I feel like this one makes sense maybe, maybe for this, but I wouldn't really attribute it to education so much as age, but I, I don't really think it makes sense there. So yeah, I'm gonna push this one off to the side. Not my favorite choice, but like I said, sometimes none of these work. All right, let's see what we have here. So in fifth grade, intensity of hand gestures. So think when you were in fifth grade, were your hand gestures really intense? Like maybe you were really shaking people's hands and then by the time you got to high school, not so big of a deal. 
bachelor's degree, your intensity wasn't so high. And then maybe as you started getting more and more advanced degrees and meeting more and more masters and PhD folks, maybe your intensity did get a little bit um, higher with the handshakes. Maybe you had a more firm handshake, super firm handshake, because you're meeting all these other doctors. Um, so maybe this, this could potentially work. I mean, I don't really know about handshake intensity for fifth graders, but maybe they're having a good time. So how about between the eye twitching and the hand gestures? I like hand gestures more. So I'm gonna keep this one on top for right now. Ooh, I'll just pl push that one up there. All right, so this one I hope wouldn't match. So frequency of being duped into sharing fake news on Facebook. So first of all, I don't know how many fifth graders are on Facebook, um, but I'm, I'm old, so maybe there's tons of them on there. I don't know. Um, but I, I actually would agree, if you're a fifth grader on Facebook, you probably are susceptible to sharing fake news because you don't know what's um, really true at fifth grade, right? It's whatever you, you, I actually don't even know where fifth graders would get news. But I'm hoping by high school that you would be able to check some sources and see what's true and what's not true. And definitely as a bachelor's, right? I like that this is heading down, like the more education you have, the likelihood or the frequency of being duped is going down. What's unfortunate, based on this U-shape, is that the more educated you get, the more educated past a bachelor's, um, you start getting, again, susceptible to um, sharing fake news on Facebook. So um, this would make me sad if this graph, if this chart matched this y-axis. So I'm still, I'm gonna put that beside, uh, behind intensity of hand gestures. I still think that one's my favorite so far. And let's see, amount you would pay to attend a Phil Collins concert. Okay, I don't think this one's gonna work either. I don't know that a fifth grader would be really, really willing to spend a lot of money to go to a Phil Collins concert. I could see that a high schooler would want to spend less and a bachelor's even less, but I don't know why if you get more and more educated, you really wanna go attend Phil Collins concert. So I don't really think that one applies. So, and in, in, in general, I don't think any of our four really applied to this U graph, but if I had to pick one, right, because that's how that game works, or well, this game and then that, all these card type games, I, I would go with intensity of hand gestures. So if you ever want to buy Charity Party, um, just check it out on the website. It's a fun little game. I've played it when we go to game nights. I dig it. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.